So I'm gonna keep it pretty short and sweet. I have a couple of gifts for Michael. Um, I haven't called him Michael in a long time. It felt funny. Um, I, I, yeah, I think most of you know what bourbon means to me. I got so many messages when he announced that he was leaving asking if I was okay. <laughs> so I think that pretty much sums it up. He's been a wonderful mentor, um, friend, colleague, and I know a lot of that will continue. So there's a few things we wanted to give to you. Um, the first one is, I don't know, it was about two months ago, Michael threw something at me. <laughs> you guys know those little Amazon dash buttons? And he's like, I don't know what you're going to do with this, but get an idea. <laughs> it sits on my desk for a while, I click it, you know, it doesn't do anything, I don't know. So I throw it to Ben, I'm like, hey, get an idea. <laughs> we still haven't come up with an idea until you're asking to leaving. Now, we all know that Michael is ahead of the game. Well, in this case, he's also ahead of Amazon, which is really hard to do. So the buttons haven't arrived yet. They have a new version coming out. So the first button that you will be getting when they arrive is a button that says, CI, Mrs. Berman. <laughs> so this is gonna go outside Judy's office so that all of us in the division can stop by as needed and click it. And what this will do, if we click it once, the message is gonna say, red alert, red alert, system down. <laughs> we think you might miss that. The second one, heading to HR. Thought you would want to know. <laughs> <laughs> the third button, guess what? We're still out of money. <laughs> It's coming. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna send you a text message. Send me text message. Well, I don't know, Ben, can we set it up to have it tweet them too? Yeah. <laughs> the other button is gonna be one in your possession. It's Berman Mrs. CI. Oh. This one, the first click is going to come to me and it's gonna say, I have an idea. <laughs> the second click is going to go to Neil and Peter, and it's gonna say, I have an opportunity for you. <laughs> the third button is going to message Herb, and it's going to say, take me to the cloud. <laughs> the opportunity to celebrate Berman's birthday with bourbon and ice cream. Strange combination. Some people like it. So I got him a bottle of bourbon and on it it says Dragon Crusher. And many of you here have read Michael's story, The Castle. The Castle is a story he wrote about higher education and it talks about two futures for higher education and it talks about the state of, of chaos that we're in and where we need to go. We're living in a castle. We are all of the knights, and we need to go out and fight this battle to protect what's working in the castle and to change what's not. And to be good knights, we have to fight the dragons. <laughs> this isn't even the emotional part. <laughs> so we got you a bottle of Dragon Crusher bourbon. So you can keep cr crushing the dragons for us. I didn't know that. So, and if you haven't read his castle story, it's online. You can find it if you search for it, or I'll send you the link. So, just one last note to just say thank you. I know we'll be in touch, Twitter, Slack, all of it, but I just want you to know how much you've meant to me. I mean, who else changes somebody's entire career in a matter of a couple of years? <laughs> so thank you. And I'll open the mic up if anybody else would like to come up and say a few words, Judy. We are down to three. We brought them on campus. We talked to them. And when it was all over, Joanne said, so which one is it? I said, none of them. She said, no, we can't have a failed search. I said, well, we do. Well, what are we going to do? I said, well, I, I think our committee has made a decision that we want to bring on Michael Berman. And she went, oh, I don't know if that'll work, and I don't remember all the inner workings <laughs> of it. Part of it was budget, part of it was timing, part of it was I don't know what. But eventually, he came on, and his very first staff meeting with all of us, he said, 
you know, I'm really, really glad to be here. And I do want you to know that I understand that I am the only CIO I know who has been hired by his staff. And that has been true every day since then. And unless you can come up with a replacement yourself, we're going to have that same thing for the next CIO. <laughs> Just so you know, I miss you a lot. Thank you for all, everything. <laughs> but I don't know if all of you know this, but um, last year, I think Michael Berman was probably the ever, the first ever chief innovation officer to sing with his students. Um, he wrote this really amazing song called, um, oh God, the title is leaving my head right now. I'm so tired. Um, where, where will we go when we're the refugees? And I reached out to him and I said, would you submit this for one of the research proposals? I actually turned it over to the world drama class and they researched and did these amazing monologues um, about refugees throughout time. And he played with the guitar class an original song that he wrote and was brave. Um, the most impactful part about that was actually watching the live Twitter feeds that the students were posting while he was singing the song, filming you singing the song. Um, students who were DACA, students who said, this is what our parents fought for us for. Um, and I don't know if um, you make me feel brave, shameless and fearless. <laughs> so anyways, I feel really privileged to have known you and uh, we're still gonna know each other. <laughs> 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 I'm so tired. <laughs> um, but thank you for being a foundation to step into that fearlessness all the time and for being fearless and leading us yourself. I was here when, when Berman came on, and I remember, actually, I don't really remember anything before Berman. That's how good Berman is. <laughs> because it's almost, like a, it's almost like a mind erase. You just have to erase it out of your memory. But um, it's totally true. I, I, I recall thinking to myself, man, I'm glad I don't work in IT, because it was just a destroyed department. But um, I think what I admire most about Michael is that he's probably the first administrator level person I could talk to. I mean, he could literally just walk up to you and just start, I mean, I don't think anybody would imagine that this man is has all that power. And I think that is the connecting point for me. I could, I could I have many memories of uh, just walking by Michael's office and, and he would call me in and we would chat about music. Um, fantastic musician, fantastic musical taste, um, and I will finish with this. Thank you, Michael, for the opportunities you've given me since I've been here, because I can tell you for a fact, I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for you. Thank you very much. I'm Jamie Hannon from Nursing, and I just cannot pass up the opportunity to thank you for all the things that you've changed in my thinking and my teaching, and I think the impact is gonna be tremendous. As we've seen in this last few months, I, you're gonna change how students learn in nursing, how they take care of people. And so your effect is like a ripple effect and it goes far and beyond this campus. And I'm sure that will continue from the chancellor's office level. So thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is Ryan Garcia, if you don't know me. I do web design and uh, sometimes print design whenever Michael asks me. And so that's what I'm concerned about. Most of the most exciting projects that I've worked on have been by <laughs> the request of Michael. Uh, if you don't know this about, about uh, Michael is that he loves design. He, a lot of the, the human center, or the people first type of thinking is one of those things that it, you know, he, he loves. And, and as it's already been mentioned, a lot of that is part of design and thinking of better ways to make things happen. And, you know, that impacted me directly because I love human-centered design. I love design. And so a lot of the most exciting projects I've gotten to work on are because of your influence and your, your willingness to, to, to do things anew. And so, yes, I'm concerned. Peter, <laughs> you got to uh, hook me up with some cool projects. In fact, it's like a walking billboard right now for some of the pro things I've, I've made um, by his request. So... Thank you so much for that. You've made it such an exciting place to work, and uh, 
for such a small university to have such high design thinking, I mean, it's a little selfish of me to say these things, but, but I'm, I'm very, very grateful. So thank you, Michael. It's getting late, but first of all, thank you. Thank you for all the kind words. I don't know how many of you are fans of Mark Twain as I am, but um, there's a story of how Tom Sawyer, they think he's died in the river, and he comes back, and he's up in the rafters of the church, and he's finding out that he's at his funeral, and they're all talking about what a wonderful guy he is. Of course, then when he appears, they start screaming at him, and his, his, his aunt starts beating him. But, uh, but I felt a little bit like I was at my memorial service, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just want to say briefly, you know, some of you have probably seen Steve Jobs' graduation talk he did at Stanford about 15, 10, 15 years ago. And he talks about the three most important things in his life, and they were all really disastrous things, you know, that happened to him. And... I just wanted to mention that the reason I'm here is because of getting laid off in another campus, which was a very traumatic experience and circumstances in which it happened and there was a lot of ugliness. And so I walked out of there and like almost the next day, Joanne Colville called me and said, um, hi Michael, I'm just wondering, you know, we might need someone here because we think maybe the CIO is not gonna be here that much longer. Please don't tell anyone. Uh, and, um, and so, so, I came here and I didn't want to connect. I really didn't want to connect because I felt like I'd been hurt and I'd been burned. I'd put my soul into a job and um, because of the conditions there and because of certain people and the decisions they made and the way they worked, the whole thing blew up in my face. It was a very painful experience. So I came here uh, in really in a lot of personal pain and I realize now that that was the basis for a lot of the good that I've been able to do here. So. I would just like to say, when I look even at my own life and the challenges I have now, I would just encourage everybody to look at those moments when you're really down and you're really hurting. And that's where you can find the inspiration to really help others and commit yourself to do good things. So um, it was because I was laid off there that I ended up here and I had this incredible experience. So um, I didn't have a traumatic experience that caused me to leave here, so it doesn't bode very well for me. <laughs> But I really, I, I love this place. I, I was thinking that I've been in places that were nice, but I've never been in one that was so kind. This is truly a kind place. And nine times out of 10, when people say they care about the students, they really, really mean it. And I can tell you that's not true everywhere you go. So thank you for caring about the students. Thank you for being so kind to me. Um, and I know that this place has an even greater future than the past. And I look forward to watching it as long as I can.